I want my minerals and I want them now. Hi everyone, Dr. Arlen Hill here with Harvest Hills Ranch and today I'm going to give you some insight on our mineral program and what benefit it's having for our cattle and I'm going to try to answer the question of does it make more sense to only utilize a source of salt with a few minerals in it or should we be giving the cattle the opportunity to choose their own minerals? So we've been doing a close examination over the last year and watching the herd and how they react at different times throughout the year. And what I have is my mineral feeder. I've, I've illustrated that in some other videos. We've talked about that from time to time. And I also keep a feeder that I made out here that has their salt in it but their, their salt, if you will, is really going to be sea salt. So we know that there's some minerals in that. The question though is, will the cattle actually get enough mineral intake from just utilizing the salt and the minerals that come along as part of the natural just evolution of the seawater, the minerals that are in the seawater? And I honestly think after really watching these guys, the answer to that is no. And what made me want to go ahead and move forward with shooting this video was a couple of observations that we made. So one, I've noticed that the cattle are, are hitting the salt, if you will, much less than they did last year. We actually went through quite a bit of salt last year. This year, after they've been under our control, we've been running them on this management intensive program. They're not using as much salt this year at all. Um, we've only gone through a couple of bags. Um, which for this herd last year, I felt like I was filling up their salt trough every time we turned around last year. Why is that? Well, a lot of that has to do with these animals were looking for some of the other minerals besides just the sodium or just the chloride that are in here. So they were probably going through more of that salt to try to find those other minerals. Herein lies the mineral feeder. So with the mineral feeder, they could actually come in and choose those minerals and only when they wanted the sodium and the chloride were they coming back to this. So when they wanted that balanced formulation, they were over here, but when they wanted to have more of the individualized minerals, they were coming over to the mineral feeder. So come over here with me. Let me show you exactly what took place or what's been taking place and the reason we're coming out here right now. And that's going to be because if I flip this open and this has literally happened within the last few days, that is hot. So let me just block that off. Okay, so one thing you'll notice is that they've been pretty aggressive on the sodium. Um, they haven't been as aggressive throughout the year with that. And then right in the bin next to that, you're going to see that there's this vitamin combination. So there's gonna be some vitamin E, some vitamin A in there. And interestingly enough, it's getting hotter, deeper into the summer. We're still getting good photosynthesis on the plants, but the things are getting a little drier, not bad, but there's a likelihood that the concentration of these in the plants themselves, in the grasses themselves, in the forbs and legumes has started to decline. So they're going and they're, they're utilizing this one more. There's a couple of others that I think are very interesting here as well. They've pretty much emptied out some of these. For example, this copper bin. This copper bin is completely empty. We came in here a few days ago and it was at least a quarter full. So they've really hit this hard in just the last few days. And right along with that, the molybdenum and the zinc. Now what's interesting about this is that this same combination of minerals were ones, those three, uh, the uh, zinc, the copper and the molybdenum, molybdenum were ones that they had hit more aggressively towards the end of the winter. I theorized on that. And I thought, well, those are used to make antioxidants in the body. So they're probably going after these more aggressively to try to make up for some of these antioxidants that they're not getting through their forage deep in the winter. Well, here they are again, going deeper into the summer and they're back on these one more time. We'll definitely have to fill those up. Come around here with me and let me show you what they did on this side because they actually threw me a curveball and did something that I was not expecting. So on this side, the potassium we put this feeder in, this is, uh, and we're at the end of July right now. This feeder has been here since January and they had never touched the potassium in here. And here they are hitting the potassium. And they've actually emptied out that potassium, uh, that potassium uh, bin. So we're gonna have to completely fill that one up. And the same thing for the boron and a few of these others here. Here's the point on this. Here's what I'm trying to get at with you on this. Does it make sense to only put the trough out? Are we maximizing the nutrition for the animal if we're only putting out the sea salt? Honestly, 
I'm not here to split hairs with you, but my observation is I don't think we're maximizing the nutrition and I'm basing that simply off of animal observation. The, the, the cattle have done a much more aggressive job of selecting the minerals that inherently, innately, they knew that they needed. They're filling those needs and when they feel like it's time for a balanced formulation, they come to it. Do they still come into this trough? Yes, they do still come into this trough, but they're working this one much more. Interesting, we were standing out here yesterday and we have noticed on the herd, we did a real close assessment on them. We did, we did a sort of semi big move yesterday and we noticed that their coats have a much, much more pronounced sheen to them. You can actually see the glossiness in them as compared to what, they, what they've had before under our, under our management system. So we feel like these guys, they're holding their body conformation, their coats look good. These are healthy animals, which is ultimately what we're going for. In the beef production business, when we're finishing out, we wanna make sure that these animals, when we actually do process them and we're bringing to you as the customer, we wanna make sure that these animals are providing the most nutritious value or most uh, nutrient value possible. Because here at Harvest Hills Ranch, it's all about nutrient density. If you don't have nutrient density, you don't have quality food, you don't have health as the consumer. So it all begins with what we do here on the farm and how we run the systems. So guys, listen, I really appreciate you joining us. If, uh, if you're out there, you're, trying, you're thinking about doing things with grass-fed beef yourself, or if you're looking to source it, these are the kind of things, these are the kind of concepts that you want to kick around or ask the producer that you're working with, what are they doing to support the mineral consumption for their animals that are under their care? I appreciate you listening. Hey, make sure that you share this with someone. If you like the information, give it a thumbs up and come back for more information. I'll, con I'll continue to try to share how, how we make the effort to make sure that we're driving as much nutrition into the food as possible. Because at the end of the day, nutrition is what makes the difference. Thanks for listening, guys. I'm Dr. Arland Hill.